Today, I'm going where few have gone before. We're talking about CNC software. F and Grave. F and Grave is a solid piece of software that allows you to V-carve, engrave, and cut. It's built with the simple to the point options that can get you started CNCing in just a few minutes. An outlined image off the internet, or something as simple as something you made in Microsoft Paint, will work. F Engrave is a 2D software, like these gears I've made. They are two-dimensional, meaning they are flat as a pancake, but cut to the shape that you desire. Now I'm using a Bob CNC E3 CNC engraver. Now most machines will likely work with the software as F Engrave is just a tool that creates coordinates in a file you save referred to as G-code. Think of G-code as coordinates like on your GPS. So many degrees latitude and so many degrees longitude and throw in a few more options to raise and lower the CNC machine and you have it. The G-code file can be edited simply by opening it with Notepad or WordPad. If you own an E3 CNC router, there's some settings in F Engrave that we need to fix for you to be able to make your first cut. First go up to the Settings tab, General Settings, and here you'll find a G-code header and a G-code postscript. On the G-code header, the only thing that we need left in here is G17. On the G-code postscript, the only thing we need in here is the M2. After you've got it like this, click on the Save button. Click OK to save. And then click Close. The F Engrave manual does a great job explaining what the rest of these settings were that I had you remove. If we scroll down, you'll see that the G17 I had you leave in sets an XY plane. Now the rest of these settings don't apply to the E3 CNC. The starting of the spindle is done manually on the switch, and we don't have a coolant mist on the E3CNC. As well down below, you'll see that the M2 that I had you leave in just ends the program. Turning the coolant off is not an option because we don't have coolant, and to stop the spindle, we do it manually with the switch. Let's design something so I can show you how F Engrave works and the settings that make it work best. Now I've got this moose off of the internet just by going to Google and searching for moose outlines and I want to add some text. So if you look up here I went to flamingtext.com. I'm a web designer slash programmer so I find a lot of my text here because it just does an excellent job of giving you all kinds of fonts. Now if we type in welcome you can see that it changes all the fonts to be welcome. Now if we keep hitting next, we keep getting all kinds of fonts. Now I've gone through quite a few of these and I picked out one up here at the top that I kind of enjoy. So I think this one kind of looks rustic. So I'll right click on it and I will copy image. We'll go back to our moose and I'll right click and I'll click paste. Now I'll go ahead and select all, just control A. And I'm going to move this up a little bit closer to the edge just to tighten up this picture so it's not so large on the CNC machine. And right about there. And I'll go ahead and I'll save this picture to the desktop. File, save as. Now if you notice, my file extension here is .jpg. Now F Engrave can only read BMPs. So what we need to do is we need to go down to 256 color bitmap. Click that and click save. Now it'll be on the desktop and we're able to go to F Engrave and start editing this file. So go to File, Open, Bitmap File, look on the desktop, and there you'll find the Moose in the Woods BMP, and there we have the actual file. Alright, so it's time to set up the settings in F Engrave so we can cut this out. Now the first thing you're going to see is image height. 
Now it's set at two inches and that's from the very bottom of these letters to the very tippy top of this tree will be two inches. Now that's a little small. I've got a five inch board that I'm going to be cutting on. So we're going to move that up to four inches. So I'll just delete out the two and make it a four. And you'll notice that it turns yellow and that means that it needs to be recalculated. Now you can hit enter or you can click this recalculate button and it'll fix it. And you can see the actual dimensions down here. It'll give a width and a height. So it's a width of 5.47 and a height of 4.1. Now the settings here, I don't actually ever mess with these and I've never needed to, along with this image angle, never needed to change that. The origin, you're gonna love this. We wanna change it to mid-center. And what that does is it gives you this line and it means that your bit is gonna be dead center right here when you zero it on your CNC machine. Now, flip image, of course you could flip it and it'd be the other way. I never use that. Mirror image, I don't ever use that as well. Now when it comes to G-code properties, the very first one is feed rate. Now feed rate is how fast the CNC machine is pushing that router around. And that's gonna be how fast your bit is traveling being pushed through all the wood. Now five inches per minute is pretty slow. So when I'm doing V-carving, I usually like to do about 15. Now if you're doing a very shallow, shallow piece on the wood, you could probably go up to 20, but for your very first time, I'd start out with, with a 15 and see how that goes. Now the plunge rate, now that's how fast that it's gonna lower the CNC router down into the wood. And I usually like to keep that at about 15 as well. Um, your Z safe, now this is, let me kind of explain here. On this W, when it cuts the whole W out, it gets to the very end here, and then it has to pick up that CNC bit, and it'll move it over to the E. Well, there's a piece of wood here because it's now buried itself in there. It needs to pull it all the way out. And this Z safe is telling it how high should I raise that bit out of that groove. And what I like to do is I like to set it at a safe number, and you can kind of play with this, and I like to set it at 1 8. Now, that's pretty high, but it keeps it from running into other pieces on your workpiece and drawing a line across it. So at uh, 1 8, this seems to be pretty good. Now the cut depth. Now this is how far it's gonna shove the bit into the wood. And it's gotta go negative because it's gotta go below the surface. So you always have to have a negative in here. Now uh, the best way to set the Z safe and this cut depth are looking at a conversion chart. And if you just go to Google and type in CNC inches to millimeters chart, you come up with this. And I printed it out and then I kind of laminated one. I've got one down here at my desk in my office, as well as I got one out there at the workbench. And a good number for V carving that I typically go for is something around, um, you know, at the very shallow ones do pretty good. Uh, this one, how about we do uh, 364, so 0 0.0468. So let's go back and look at that. All right, there we go. So that is our cut depth, and that'll be how deep it goes on these lines. Now then, we're going to switch this over to V-carb, and you'll see the setting down here. And then we can go into settings here and go to V-Carve settings. Now under V-Carve settings, there's three options, a V-bit, a ball nose, and a straight bit. Now today we're using a V-bit, so I'm gonna leave that one checked. Now the V-bit angle is at 60 degrees already preset, and that's the angle here. Now mine's already a V-bit at 60, so I'm gonna leave it. Now the V-bit diameter is from this point to this point. It should say on your bit, but mine's a half inch, which is already preset. Now this is the most critical setting on this whole entire page, and it's the cut depth limit. Now we've already set it over here, back on this other side, but if you don't set it here, it won't limit how deep it goes, and it may actually start to stab into your work. So I'm gonna set that at negative, because we have to go below the surface, 0 .0, 0 0.0468. I'm just setting it to the exact limit that we already have set over here. And once that's done, it's in yellow saying that it needs to be recalculated. Um, 
down here you've actually got the uh, options to do multiple passes being that we're going so shallow uh, at this one I won't need multiple passes but if you go any deeper than this it's probably a good idea to do multiple passes so it, it doesn't strain the bit so bad but anyway after this you can click close and then very last thing we need to do is we need to change this from engrave to v carve and once you've done that you need to go ahead and click calc v carve and that's just calculating the v carve of the path it's going to take. And it'll just follow the outside line here. Now I've left that in real time, so that's how fast it's done. And the next thing we need to do is we need to go up here and go to File, Save G Code File. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this on the desktop. And I'm going to name this Moose in Woods 2. And hit Save. Y to overwrite. And we're done. Let's go ahead and uh, take it out to the CNC machine and see what it looks like. The first thing we want to do is open up the Universal G-Code Sender. Click OK to the message. And then we'll want to go up and we'll need to connect. Give it about four or five seconds here. The next thing we'll need to do is the dollar sign H is the home and we always have to home it before we can ever send any commands or have it move. So go ahead and click home. Okay, now it's homed and ready to go. What I'll go ahead and do is uh, we've got inches here and millimeters here. If you put it in inches it moves a lot faster. So I'm going to go ahead and move it out over top of my board of where I'm wanting to cut this uh, moose and the welcome sign. And when I get it to about center of where I think that it'll be close to being able to cut, I'm going to go ahead and go to browse. I'm going to go to my desktop. And I'm going to browse for moose in the woods too. And click open. Here you can see the uh, picture of it here, and I can zoom in. But first what we want to do is we want to go down here and we're going to reset all of our settings to zero. So X would be at zero, Y is at zero, and Z is at zero. Now Z is up in the air, we'll move that down here later, but I'm trying to find out exactly where it is in relation to that bit. So I'll start moving it over. And I'm watching to see where on my piece of wood I am in relation to that bit. Now that looks good there. Now what happens if I go back? That appears to be good as well. Um, next thing I need to do is I need to go to the top of that tree and make sure that I stayed on the board. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to return to zero. Okay, and now we need to lower the bit down to the piece of wood, and that's going to be our Z. So we're going to reset it once we get to the bottom. Now I start off with inches, and I do this a few times until I start getting close, and then I switch over to millimeters. So here I'm going to go ahead and switch over to millimeters so I don't bottom the bit out. Okay, and that looks really close. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reset them all. So reset X, which X and Y really don't need to be reset. And then I'm gonna go ahead and reset Z. And if you'll notice, the numbers change down here. So this is our new zero. Uh, I will then take it back with inches and I'll go up, so Z plus. And I just like to place it up in the air. And the next thing we need to do is go ahead and turn on the router and we're gonna push the play button for it to go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now here's the piece straight off the CNC. I didn't do any sanding, and I missed the center just by a little bit, but it could easily be corrected. I like to spray the board with some black spray paint, then I come back with a sander, and it really makes those lines stand out. Hopefully this video helped you better understand F-Engrave. Check out the description to find links to everything I discussed in this video. Thanks for watching.